Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and tonight I will be smoking the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust Frog Juice. This 6x48 ring gauge cigar is a follow-up to the 2020 release as a store exclusive using a blend of Ecuadorian 2000 Habano wrapper over Nicaraguan shade-grown binder with fillers coming from the Dominican Republic and from Nicaragua. The original length in 2000, which I believe was the last time it was released, was originally a 5.52, so it was a smaller and fatter Vitola that Steve has tweaked slightly. I missed out on the release of these, so Cigar Hound Dog was nice enough to provide me one for the channel. It is difficult being that these are one-off sticks and they were limited. The name comes from the fact that this was supposed to be a, originally a Kentucky Derby release, and frog juice is the shot horses are given when they're amped up. The PEDs. Off of the initial lighting, there's plenty of leather, plenty of wood, with a nice bready toasty note. Light amounts of pepper off the retro hill, just a simple white pepper note. Nutty undertones as well, with a little bit of that espresso slash medium roast coffee. So we're gonna smoke this down for a couple of minutes. We'll get right into it. Smoking our frog juice. So far, so good. Got a nice tight ash, nice burn line, all the things that we like to see, flavor-wise. It's a little punchy, a little rough around the edges. Not gonna lie, the pepper spice has picked up. We now have a mixture of black, white, possibly even some red pepper, but definitely black and white pepper. Stings the nostrils about a seven out of 10. It doesn't detract from the amount of coffee espresso. That is definitely the primary flavor note. Some really nice undertones of leather, along with some hickory wood. The barrel spice notes come out really nicely on this. I don't know if the blend changed from its original intention, but if it was for Kentucky Derby time, I would imagine that Sokka was thinking about pairing this up with some bourbon. I can understand having a little bit more woody, a little bit more leathery, and also peppery cigar if you're gonna go with the bourbon pairing because of the fact that as a blender, I'm just thinking I would probably be considering the barrel spice notes, the sweetness, the woody notes, all of that fun stuff, along with the coffee and mint juleps and, you know, fun things that you can extract from a nice bourbon pairing. So this is not surprising. I fully expected there to be a decent amount of spice to it. I fully expected it to be this nice medium plus almost full body smoke. Just finishing up the second third now of our frog juice. Pepper has settled in nicely. The blend, almost dark fruit undertones. It's less of the barrel spice notes, less of the hickory wood more of a transition between sweeter undertones. There's a mixture of vanilla that's come out along with a little bit of plum, some date, some fig, those dark fruits. But with the spice dialing back into that five or a six where it's very easy on the retrohale and on the upper respiratory system to kind of taste through some of the deeper, darker, richer notes. But the, the main flavor of coffee and espresso still carries this blend. Barking on the final third now of our Dunbarton Frog Juice, and it is time for a pairing. You know that we had to go with bourbon with this one, and we chose an oldie but a goodie, the Henry McKenna Bottle and Bond 10-year Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Spicier, bolder, more intense bourbon. It is now weeded in the same way that Larceny from Heaven Hill is, or that the Maker's Marks of the World are. But man, the body, the spice. That extra little bit of proof just goes so well. Brings out more caramel, almost a chestnut kind of flavor to it. Absolutely complimentary in this final third. And overall, I, I could see this being a very intense cigar in a 5.52. I don't know if that had anything to do with Sokka kind of changing it up. Overall, the Frog Juice by Dunbar and Tobacco and Trust is a solid five-pack worthy cigar. I don't think that it's a box worthy. I know that it's probably still in a 10 count, but I think that it's something that you really don't need to pick up more than a couple, just a few to age until the next release four years down the road. And five of those sounds perfect to me because you have one that you could smoke right away and one every single year on the Kentucky Derby that you can have with your favorite bourbon cocktail and enjoy. So 
My overall recommendation is that it's a five pack worthy stick. It definitely has the body, the intensity, especially in the first third and in the final third to match up with your favorite bourbon. In the second third, it's super mellow, very chill and just enjoyable. I love the transitions that Steve put together. I think that overall it's a quality blend, just like pretty much all of the Steve Saka blends that we've had on the channel. Well deserving of the Dunbarton name and the Steve Saka blend. So thank you all so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, continuing to grow the community here at Master Your Ash. Follow the infamous Smoke Show. That is our central live stream. Rumble and Spotify are the backups. Patreon if you'd like to be entered into the giveaway at the end of the month. And I look forward to catching you again for another Dunbarton Frog Juice Cigar Review.